Well, hello again, it's Ashley, and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing another alcohol ink card today, but this time is going to be a super simple alcohol ink Mother's Day card. I'm going to be using some Ranger inks or alcohol inks, as well as some Birch Press designs, dies, and stamps today to create this card. If you are not familiar with my comparison video between alcohol ink cardstock and Yupo paper, I will link it here. I will let you know now that my preferred method is always alcohol ink cardstock, but there are of course some differences and different people will like different things. So that is linked here in the upper right hand corner if you are interested in that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. This is my air puffer. I've shown this in videos before. I will link it below and it's basically just called an air puffer or a camera cleaner or something like that. So I use this to create this really nice feathery look. The first time I saw this was from a fellow crafter, Jessica Frost Ballas. I'm sure that you are familiar with her, but if not, I will link her uh, Instagram in the description. She does wonderful alcohol ink art, and I've learned a lot from watching her videos as I've been learning as well. As I mentioned before, I am using Ranger alcohol inks, and this color that I'm using here is Pink Sherbert. I love this color because when layered on top of itself, it creates this new purpley, bluey color, and I love that it gives so much dimension and so many more colors than just the one that it provides uh, when layered on top of each other. So you'll see here that I put a drop of alcohol ink down and then a drop of alcohol inks blending solution right on top of that. I then take my air puffer or camera lens cleaner, depending on where you buy it, it will have a different name. And I just rotate my cardstock a little bit while puffing the air onto the alcohol ink. This again just gives it a really nice feathery look and it helps you control where it goes a little bit more. It's not something that you can control completely, but it's nice to have a little bit of say in what your piece will look like at the end. I'm adding some cranberry color here right to the center and I just wanted it to be a little more saturated. I'm actually going for a bit of a watercolor look here with alcohol ink that really like fun, vibrant alcohol ink tendency that you get when you use them. I'm using some alcohol ink blending solution in a small well here and a watercolor palette and a paintbrush that I use only for this technique. I dump the paint, dunk the paintbrush into the alcohol ink blending solution and then just put some splatters all over the piece. It picks up those pieces where the splatters go and it really makes a fun textured look. It can look like bubbles or water, or in this case, just an added texture. And I think that it really makes the piece. It really gives it a lot more texture, like I said, a lot more interest, and it's just something that draws your eye to it even more. So I need a little bit more because I've added some more alcohol ink, as you could see. So I just dunk a little bit. And again, I use this paintbrush specifically for this technique. The alcohol ink blending solution really dries out the bristles in the brush and it's not really going to work well with any medium after that. So I would highly suggest putting one to the side just for this technique if you're going to try it out. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be a really nice cheap one that you get from your local craft store. Anything will work. So I've gone ahead and used some Lingo Alphabet dies from Birch Press Designs. I love these because they're small enough that you can create whatever word you want. Now here I'm obviously just going for the word mom, so I'm, I'd be pretty safe with any size die, but these are great because you can create any message that you want with them. I've cut this, these out of white cardstock as well as a gold cardstock. And that is because I want there to be a little bit of a shadow because I want it to draw your eye in a little bit more and be easier to read. Anytime you're putting die cuts, especially letters on top of a very busy background, adding this sort of second layer or the shadow layer really helps. Another thing that helps is a piece of vellum. So I've taken about a quarter of an inch strip and I'm going to place my words or letter dies on top of this strip. I really love the way that vellum can make something jump out at you. It allows you to see through it since it's translucent, but it also adds that differentiation and you can see that it's trying to 
point something out to your eye. Your eye is immediately drawn there because the colors underneath it are a little muted. I bend the overhang back and then use a piece of blue painter's tape or whatever tape you have will work. You could even glue it. I just like it to move a little bit. I like a little movement when I'm doing this for uh, vellum pieces especially. Since I'm going to go ahead and uh, adhere this to an A2 size card base either way, um, you're not going to see that back and definitely not going to see that piece of painter's tape. I'm going to use the sentiment, so glad we're friends, um, because I, I am friends with my mom and I think that she'll appreciate that sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that in Versamark ink just below where I'm going to adhere the letter dies to spell out mom, and I'm going to heat emboss this. Now, when you're using your heat gun on an alcohol ink cardstock, you want to keep it far enough away. It will warp pretty terribly if you don't let the heat gun, one, heat up uh, ahead of time, and two, keep it far enough away. You don't want too much heat and too much sort of like focused heat on one area. You really want it to be spread out evenly and far enough away that it doesn't warp too bad. But just in case to get any of that warping out, I'm going to go ahead and add some foam tape to adhere it to my A2 size card base. And this helps take out any warping. Even on watercolor cardstock, this will help as well. So here's the finished product. I did add a, end up adding a few gems here and there because I just can't help myself. But I love the way that this turned out. It's so bright and pretty. There looks like there's tons of colors in there, really, when there's only two. I can see some purple and reds, pinks, and I see a little bit of blue, maybe some tan. And I love the way that the letter dies pop out with that white offset just behind it. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. As always, all of the links to the products are in the description. And if you have any other ideas of techniques or things that you'd like to see in a video, I would love for you to drop it in the comments. I'm always looking for new ideas and would love to know what you think. All of the products again are linked in the description as well as the coordinating blog post on both my personal blog and also the Birch Press Designs blog. Thank you so much for stopping by. I will see you again very soon. Thank you. Bye.